look familiar. That's okay. Every time I see you, it makes me feel good. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, January 31st, which means tomorrow being Thursday, I do have that live streaming event, which I do every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm there for you for about an hour, hour and a half, taking requests for tickers you want me to look at. I'll go over the information. My lovely co-host Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you our opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, we can only look at so many tickers in the time we've got and recently I've not been able to get to them all. So if you really want your ticker looked at, get it in the queue early. I mean before four. I put up a placeholder for this video around lunchtime. You can drop your ticker in the comments then. I'll see it. First come, first served. Plus, that gives me more time to go through the information. I'll give you more bang for your buck. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, every Thursday. So we are going to take a look at a hot penny stock. That is a stock under 5 bucks on any market that has potential to make us money. And I'm looking for basically two, maybe three things in it. I want a hot chart. I want a hot piece of news. And it wouldn't hurt to have some hot buzz online. Well, we got all three with Toner, ticker T-O-N-R, Toner One World Holdings. Now, there has been a lot of buzz online about her because she just came out with some big news and the chart is running hot right now. Toner finished today at 0013, an excellent buy price, doesn't even have to hit 003. Just that little move and you're going to make 100% on this. She had over 18% gains today. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she has those two green ticks I'm always harping to you about because it's validated information. And with pink, she don't get any validated information. That's it. That's the bonus in the game. So if you're going to be holding a pink for a while, make sure to see these green ticks and get some validated information. If you're just day trading it, it doesn't really matter. Now they tell us the company is a shell risk. That means that she claims she's in business doing something, but they're not declaring any revenues, which does look to be the case. So what is Toner One World Holdings all about? Well, they tell us here that Toner One World Holdings is an emerging growth company that is expanding into the world of digital commerce initiatives and finance, IP licensing, cryptocurrency, and high-value NFTs. And I'm going to take their word for it. I haven't really seen anything about that in current affairs. It seems everything they're doing right now is focused on AI. So what was the relative volume around the company today? We've got a nice jump. Four times their normal volume going from 83 million, which is definitely not under the radar, to over 384 million today. A lot of extra excitement. Share structure for toner. Not good. Kind of atrocious actually. Outstanding share count is high, 7 billion plus. Insiders own about 330 million, which leaves about 6.7 billion on the open market. Call it the float. Now, it's bad enough shareholder value is sliver thin here because there's so many shares, but you've got to be worried about a reverse split. That's a ton of shares. And we have been seeing a lot of reverse splits happen with the sub penny companies when their stock starts running and they close in on the penny. Well, we're down here at double zero one. We're about 10 times away. So we've got some play room here, but that's something to concern yourself with. Also, you've also got to keep in mind that they may have voted and approved a reverse split 10 months ago and it's in management's discretion meaning they can do it anytime they want and they do not have to pre-inform you now that it's going to happen because they already told you 10 months ago and we see that happen a lot. You wake up and there was a reverse split but no news press, no filing. That's because it was already approved. Market cap on the company, 7.7 million. Looking at the financials, well, you know you're not going to see anything. It's a shell risk. We have nothing on the annuals, nothing on the quarterly. Well, we do have something on the quarterly. Beginning of the year, they had 16,000 come in. We know it's thousands because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on here. And they got to keep it all. I have no clue what it was for, but it was a one offer. That's for sure. Balance sheet for the company. Uh-oh, what's this? We've got nothing in the bank. We've got no current assets, no assets whatsoever. 
Mm. Total current liabilities, almost $11 million, 10.8. Well, this is strange. They say that we have positive stockholder equity, which happens to be the exact same number as liabilities were. Now that looks fishy to me, but in saying that, Capital surplus here is 17.8 million. Retained earnings is 14 million. These are big numbers that come into play. But the fact that it's exactly the same number as total liabilities, that just begs questions. So some more due diligence is necessary here. Taking a look at our disclosures. Well, this is where it all begins, folks. We have got a 8K here that just came out on the 22nd. And this started it. We've got a piece of news that will elaborate. On January 18th, 2024, the company participated in a live interview via Twitter regarding the potential resignation of the CEO, Corinda Melton, sometime in 2024. Okay, that's not really a catalyst though, right? Also discussed were the company's exploration in vetting potential merger candidates in the artificial intelligence and technology space in Malaysia and Singapore. That's what got it all started right there. Now we've got two pieces of news and we've covered one of these a couple times on my live streaming event on Thursdays when people ask us to look at Toner. Toner One World Holdings chooses Soul Machines as their virtual human technology partner for Maddie. It's virtual trading assistant for MetaTrader. They have come up with an AI trading assistant for you and I, the everyday average trader, not your big corporations and enterprises. They got all sorts of that stuff. This is for us. Now, it is the beta stage. It's just starting. So think about that. AI grows fast. It learns fast. And we're talking about a trading assistant on the market. Now, right here, just to give you an idea, in the headlines, they say, hey, Maddie, buy 100 shares of Tesla. Okay, so she's going to be an assistant and she can do things for you. But what is AI really all about? It is about accumulating data and then making predictions on it. That's what it's really for. And if I can use Maddie to go out and search the market for stocks that carry these traits or moving this way, had this much jump and she can look at all of them for me. I'm really liking that. So they made a deal here to get a virtual human. So now it's just not like Alexa or a chat box. Now you're looking at a person who looks real, who is using a real human voice talking to you about your trades. Oh man, <laughs> this, I like that. I like that a lot. Then we have another piece of news that just came out that gives us more information. This is just a shareholders letter. I say just, I love shareholder letters. They normally come from upper management. They give you a view of things they've done in the past and they tell you about things they're going to do in the future. And it's coming directly from the horse's mouth. So they're great. So jumping into this, this came out on January 30th. This was yesterday. The company tells us in this and I've bulleted it. Currently, we are actively involved in negotiations with two merger candidates, both of which are artificial intelligence, AI companies. Concurrently, we are in discussions and negotiations with both AI companies to include a significant share buyback as an essential part of the final plan. So regardless of who they merge with, which is a catalyst on its own, when they merge, there to be a share buyback, which will give a share value, which we need. Please get the shares out of there without doing a reverse split. In addition, they're not going to ask for any more authorized shares. They've got 8 billion authorized shares. They've got 7 billion on the market. They got 1 billion more they could put on the market. We don't want them asking for 200 billion. That's not reassuring, is it? They tell us that one of the potential AI merger candidates boasts an impressive track record of over $120 million in revenue with a remarkable 42% net profit margin. Also, one of the candidates has introduced us to a substantial AI machine learning component that can enhance Maddie's capabilities by connecting her to more extensive range of online products and services such as Amazon.com, Zoom, Google Meet. Now, that's it, folks. Right now, she's on, what, what did they say, MetaTrader? She's on one platform. That's great. 
I'm excited about it, as you can see. But if you can get her on multiple platforms, you are exponentially increasing your revenues. So I see a lot of potential here, folks. We've got two companies. I don't know if they plan on merging with both or just one. They got something to be gained from both of them. One's already making strong revenues and one can open up the door for strong revenues. So let's go take a look at that chart because I like it too. That's not just an impressive chart. That's a peculiar chart. This is Toner One World Holdings, ticker T-O-N-R. And we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view here. Our low bubble, which he has been at for months, is triple zero one. And today we had a high of double zero one four. Between the two bubbles, a 1,400% difference. Now, she is sitting on the floor of the open market. You cannot buy a stock any cheaper than 0001. And she's been there for months, bouncing between 0001 and 0002 hundreds of times. And then in November, she graduated up a tier, started bouncing from 0002 to 0003. And she did that many times. Then on January 17th, she took off and she didn't turn back. She started at 0002 and here today hit that high of 0014. In two weeks, she has ran 700% and did not look back. She went sideways bouncing off of her 20, but that isn't looking back. That is continuing on. This looks good. We've had lots of volume ever since the climb started and it is not letting up. All of our SMAs are turned up and climbing smoothly and in their right place. Looking great. Oscillators were strong, but now are stronger. Everything's showing power. Got lots of big green bars. Our RSI is up there at 75 and on fire right now in the overbought zone. Now, don't let anybody tell you that because it's in the overbought, it's going to come down. Well, yeah, it will sooner or later, eventually, but this one's been up there for two and a half days. So it's not like it's in a hurry to come down, right? Four hour chart looks good to me. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So we got a low here of double zero two, triple zero two, laying on our 200 day SMA, doing nothing. Then she took off. She fell back down to her 50 day SMA, never got close to her 200. We did have a rubber ball bounce on our 50 here. You know, a rubber ball has air in it. It goes in the water and then immediately comes back out and bounces. That's what happened here. Real quick and fast, she went under and back up and just took off. Climbing on her nine day SMA without any problem, she hit that high and now she's going sideways and we got one red bar still on top of the nine day SMA. Now, what I'm thinking here is that nine day got too far away from the 20. That's a big spread here. Get too far away, it's got to come back or it's got to slow down. Right now, as she's going sideways, everything else is catching up to her. She could fall back down to them or she could wait around for them to catch up to her. I think that's what she's doing. Oscillators show a lot of strength, though there was a little bit of cool off with that red bar right there, but nothing that impacts them at all. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. So we were at 0005 five days ago, under the 200, over the 200, under the 200, that's what triple lot stocks do. They like to bounce up and down in the same zone. But then she took off two days ago. She was down here at triple zero five and ran up to that double zero one four. And now she's going sideways and she is sitting on actually two SMAs that are knotted together. Our 50 day and our 20 day, which is good. That's extra strength. Looks like she's hanging on to that rope, waiting for the 200 to come up to her rather than falling down to it. So I'm presuming when the 200 gets close to her, she's going to use it as a launch pad and take off again. However, look at our oscillators. They're not saying that. My PPO is falling and my ADX is coming together. Whenever the two are coming together, that means the price is falling. Whenever they're going apart from each other, your price is rising. That says they're falling. MACD says they're falling. We just had a negative crossover pushing down with a lot of red bars. Oh, we have a bright light at the end of the tunnel here. RSI is going sideways. Why is that bright? Because the RSI, believe it or not, is the price line. 
If you were to take all these bars and turn it into a line, the line on that chart would be the exact same line on your RSI because they are the same line, which is why people get excited when the RSI starts climbing because it means the price is climbing. So my point here is the RSI is going sideways. The price has stopped falling. Before you can start rising, you got to stop falling and going sideways is not falling. So right now she's paused her fall. So she's in good position. And we've got live catalysts. We've got two AI companies. Are they going to merge with both or are they going to choose one? Either way they go, they're going to win. They're either going to get a 120 million revenue making company or they're going to get a company that allows them to go on to other platforms and open up their avenues for revenue. It's a win-win situation either way. And we're just waiting for word, right? Hopefully they don't back out of both deals. You got to be leery of pinks. You got to take everything with a grain of salt until you see a filing. Filing speak louder than anything, though I lean on press releases. So I like Toner, folks. That's why she's running right now. I would definitely be putting her on my watch list, but I would definitely do some more research. See if they're into NFTs and cryptocurrencies and doing all of that. If they are, they may be able to put the AI to use in those sectors as well. Sounds good to me. Remember, folks. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.